What's going on, everybody? I hope you all had an awesome Easter. It's Monday. It's a crazy day over here. Um, you see who we have here. Adam Crane, thank you for sharing uh, the link for the book. I know a lot of folks are going to ask for that. We get situated here. Sorry for all the motion and commotion. Uh, um, Adam, thank you. Adam and I will, Adam, we need to connect. Um, Deborah Deegan, yes, we'll, uh, we'll touch bases with you. Um, let's see. Diana Montoya, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. And yes, I can personally try and give you a call, Deborah, as soon as I can. Hi, Adam Crane. How are you, buddy? Um, Keith Carroll Kaizen, thank you so much for being a part of it. I appreciate it. And thank you for telling me where you're watching from. I'm always curious, you guys. Adam Crane, yeah, we need to connect on uh, an issue. You guys, just so you know, we're not a debt consolidation firm. First and foremost, we don't, you know, we don't take your money and then put it into like an escrow account and then pay your bills for you. But if you have a one-off scenario that's kind of bothering you, like someone on here again, I won't mention their name, but uh, you know, I'm happy to get on the phone with you and, and see if we can come up with a solution. And that's what uh, we're gonna do. Hey, Ellery, how you doing, buddy? Karita Patton, hello, Albany, Georgia. How you doing, Johnny McCoy, my man? What's going on? Deborah Deegan says hi from Illinois. Hello. Hola, Norma Gallardo. Um, I don't know if you've ever spoken to Juan. He's our, our Spanish rep in here. Caught the hola. Uh, Miss Lake. <laughs> don't be embarrassed. It's all good. We'll get started for you whenever you're ready. I'm here to help you. Thank you guys for sharing this. Um, over 26 live viewers, over 100 views already. So thank you so much. Um, Harrison, New York. We got Teddy Ramirez. What's going on? How are you? Thank you for being here. Uh, Cody Holyfield. Hello. Watching from Southern Oregon. Awesome. Happy to, happy to have you. Welcome. 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 I know you are, Miss Lake. I know your first name is not Darnell. I can't remember what it is offhand, but uh, I know that's just your your Facebook name, and that's okay. So I, that's why I say Miss Lake. It's the proper thing to do, but also I know that your first name is something different. Luis Olma from Texas, how are you? Um, I'm the one who is deceived. <laughs> yeah, Cody. I know it's a weird, weird, weird game that we're playing here with these credit credit agencies. Um, you're not the first, and I'm sure you're not going to be the last that the credit bureaus say you don't even have a pulse, even though you do. Ellery and Adam are, are sharing uh, howdy, hellos. Oh, Nita. There's Nita. Nita is here. Nita is a client for, I think, going on the second month now. And Nita got this and sent it to me. She was kind enough to do that. And Nita, I hope it's okay that I'm sharing it. But these are four medical bills. Look at the balances owed. 468, 128, 150, and 86 on some medical stuff. And look at the result. Deleted, deleted, deleted. So don't tell me this isn't worth 119 bucks a month. Give me a break, you guys. Um, 600, 750, $800 in medical bills deleted from the report. I mean, come on. In your second month, not to mention the score increase that'll come with that over time, obviously. So God bless you guys. Thank you for sharing your stories. Um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. and Archelius Terry Hines says, receiving some reports, some things are being verified. Um, also increase factual most dispute must dispute with the creditor yes and we we're in the process of doing that as well for you Archelius so thank you for sharing hello to you as well and thank you for uh, for being here yeah it's not uncommon things are gonna get verified things are gonna be deleted um, we're gonna keep plugging away like I've told you guys before we've had people that you know had certain accounts you know we got over the first you know four months we got you know first two months things were verified second you know the third and fourth month things came off and then there were two or three sticklers and they didn't care about the money they were paying us as a fee 
they were more curious about us continuing to to work on those items and after the 11th round finally the things came off so sometimes it takes some persistence so um yeah jack happy to help you um shoot a private message over um go to the credit movements page go to send a message just type live chat and put your phone number we'll know you're on the live tonight and um Juan and Anthony will give you a call if they're not already pinging you right now. Um, sent you a letter on Messenger today. Got letter of deletion. Awesome, Ellery. Let me take a look at it. Let me see if I can find it without losing you guys here. Ellery. I, I honestly haven't been in the Messenger, Ellery, much today, but I've been doing video shoots and stuff. Let's see. I'm pulling it up now. Where are you at, my man? Let's see. There we go. Portfolio recovery. Yes. I love this. Can I share this, Ellery? Can I share it? Um, Ellery deletion portfolio. I'm going to save it here. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. Good stuff, guys. Thank you for sharing it, Ellery. Create a patent. I'm a new customer. Yep. Patience. Patience, grasshoppers. Um, got a letter of deletion started in February. Jacqueline Gibbons. Yay. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Alvin Cousins. What's up, man? Um, yep, we're still working. We will keep working. Portfolio recovery as well for you. Awesome. Good. Sounds like we got our, we got portfolio recovery's number. Literally and figuratively. Thanks, Ellery. Thanks for giving me permission. Um, if you got the book, if you're planning to do it on your own, um, I'll go into that a little bit here. Um, a lot of the folks on here that are talking are, are people that have, they, they have the book, but they realize it's a lot of work. It's not worth their time, the headache, nor the cost of postage and everything else that it costs to do it on their own. So they said, Ryan, I'm putting my trust in you. And those are the folks that are sharing their experience. Bonnie, just so you know. Um, but if you are inclined to do it on your own, if you have the time, if you have the patience, you know, I, I refer to other things, right? Like tomorrow morning, actually at 7.30, I'm going to the Toyota dealership to get an oil change in my Tundra. And I'm doing that because quite honestly, I don't wanna do it and spend my weekend doing that. I'd rather be with my kids. I had someone come over to clean the gutters because all the leaves were weighing them down from the fall. Um, and we had some rain and I'm like, oh man, I should get the gutters clean. I'm not going to get the ladder out and go up there. I'd rather sit in the backyard and play catch with my kids, you know, or work on their golf swing or whatever the hell. So anyway, it's the same thing, Bonnie. You know, it's it's really up to you. If you have the time, the patience, and you, you want to get into it, what you need to do is, you know, make sure you're a member of the Movement Academy. Um, on there, there's video tutorials and things. The first thing you have to do is you have to get your credit report. You can get it. You can get a copy of it. You can go to the credit report tab on thecreditmovement.com get your report. Um, we want to make sure we have all three reports, all three scores. Um, then go and look at the video tutorials in the Movement Academy on how to read the reports that are prioritizing the items that are on there. And then you got to have the Fair Credit Reporting Act and Fair Debt Collection Practices Act stuff available so that you can figure out which letters to send and make sure, again, you're paying attention to the, to the book um, and, the, and the things in there. Because what I don't want you to do is dispute something, you know, that has positive history but has a couple lates and disputed to have it completely removed because you, again you lose some of that positive payment history as well you guys so um but anyway bonnie that's where you need to start you need to become a member of the movement academy if you're not already um and get ready to to put in some work and just start by reading the book you know um let's see megan Megan, loving my baby's Baxter, says, hello, I'm happy, I see progress. <laughs> Love it. Nicole Dawkins, what's up? Good to see you. Thanks for being here. 
Monique, let's talk. Um, I'm here. Um, yeah, send me a private message, Elvin. Diego's having happy hour again. You're always at happy hour, my man. Bonnie, I'm happy to help. Send a private message. Just say live chat. Put your phone number in there. Uh, myself or someone will give you a call right away. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Monique, yeah, let's talk. Send me a private message as well and just say, you know, you want to you wanna chat. I've got about three or four active clients requesting calls. I'll try and get to you guys here. Hi, Velma Howard. How are you? Um, hey, Judy. I think I know who it was. It was Adam that's on these lives. Um, and he's in San Francisco, not Uganda. Um, let me see. I appreciate you sharing. I don't want to take up the whole screen here with this, but I want to make sure. I think he's just an advocate. You know, he's on the lives. He's a great guy. I've talked to him personally. He's, uh, Adam's, Adam's great. Um, and he's always trying to help and spread the word and, and, and be part of the movement. So, um, Adam's actually on this live right now. So I appreciate you sharing your concern, but I can rest assured Adam's just an advocate because he's been on the, uh, on the lives and he's just a, cl he's a client of ours. He's put his trust in us. He's been following me for a very long time. And, um, I, I certainly understand and appreciate, I'm sure Adam doesn't take any offense either, Judy. We want you to be comfortable. We want everyone to be comfortable. We're all a community here. So I appreciate you sharing your concern. I can assure you, you've got nothing to, to be concerned with. Adam does not work for the credit movement. Um, and uh, he doesn't work for us. He's just a, he's just an advocate. He's just a, he's a client, he's a follower, and he's a fan. So, but I appreciate you sharing your, your, uh, your concern and we'll, I'll, I'll, you know, we can, per I'll personally reach out and obviously want to make sure you're, you're comfortable because we don't want anyone as a customer who's not comfortable because it's just a, a customer service nightmare for us. So, um, but thank you, Judy, for sharing that. And again, um, I'm sure Adam understands as well. I don't know who that is then. If it's not Adam Crane, I'm not sure who it is. Adam Crane, is that you? You may be originally from Uganda. I'm not sure. Maybe you can clear that up, Adam, because I thought it was you that was. Uh... But anyway, Adam, Adam, if it is Adam Crane that's on here, I'm assuming that's who it was. Um, anyway, whatever. Um, we're here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you, Judy, and you're, you're welcome, you're welcome. But thank you again, uh, we want you to be comfortable, so thank you for sharing your concern. Eric Milan, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, inquiries are, are something that we certainly do attack, Wes, it's a great question. Um, we talk about them all the time. You know, that you get murdered on, on inquiries when you car shop mainly, right? Or if you go to like Lending Tree or Di one of these places online that shops rates for you, you're authorizing them essentially to shop the rates. So don't ever do that. Also don't ever co-sign for anyone. But um, for those of you that have, I mean, you guys, I know uh, for all the avid followers, you've seen this a million times, but I'm gonna share it anyway. Hi, Brenda from Tallahassee. So you guys see this? Here's the car shopping deal right here, right? You can see all these Capital One Auto Finance, AmeriCredit, uh, Hudson Nissan, Capital One, Capital One, Hudson Nissan, Wells Fargo Dealer Services, Flagship, Ally Financial, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. You can see the dates over here on the side. They're all pulled on the same weekend in September. And a lot of people think, you guys, that you have this 30-day shopping window. This is a myth that exists. Now, they're not actually lying to you when they say you have this 30-day shopping window. You can pull your credit if it's pulled for the same thing. If you're just shopping rates, it doesn't hurt your score. I want you to understand this about inquiries, you guys. Um, and I'll talk about inquiries a little bit here. That'll be a topic we can talk about, and then I'll get back to the to the questions. Um, and you know, the big thing is. Chris Ball, we got to get your, um, I saw that you canceled your identity IQ. We got to have that active so we can pull the new report, just so you know. I saw your, your question pop up. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it is Adam Crane. Okay, Adam lives in San Francisco. Judy, just so you know, he doesn't work for us. He he works with us. He's a he's a client. He's on these live chats, but he's he's not a member. Of, he's not a, a an employee of the credit union. He's just a fan and a and a follower. So. Um, he actually put the link for the book for everyone um, in the beginning of the chat. Let me get back to the question about, yeah, and of course you can come to me directly if you have if you have concerns, just come to me directly. And again, Adam couldn't take your information anyway because he doesn't he doesn't work with us. He's just a fan and a follower and a client. Let's see. Yeah, old job, employment stuff, um, Morales, Miranda. Um, that's one of the things in the book that we cover as well, and I'll get back to inquiries, but it's some of the first stuff that I talk about in the book, I'll show you guys, is personal information. You know, it's the foundation of everything. So there's a couple of letters in here for inquiry removal, right? Inquiry removal letter one and two there. Um, sorry if it's hard to see, but. I'm trying to make it easier, but right there. Um, and then the next, very next section is removing outdated and incorrect mailing addresses, and there's a letter to use for that as well. And then correcting inaccurate names, social security numbers, dates of birth, and employer history. There's a letter for that. So yeah, that's part of what we do. You can certainly do that pretty easily on your own too if that's the only stuff you're concerned with. Um, oh, it was Adam Crane. Cheaper through him, huh? Muy interesante. Thank you for telling me. I'll talk to Adam personally about it. He's a client, so I don't, I don't know what's going on. But yeah, just talk to me directly. Let's see. Yeah, Chris, you're coming up on, you know, when you should see updates. The bureaus have by law 30 days to respond, but obviously we got to allow time for mail on both ends. And I believe that the identity IQ got canceled for you, so we need to we need to check on that. I was just looking at your file actually earlier. So uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll talk to Adam about that. I think there's probably some mis, uh, miscommunication or something. Adam's actually chiming in here. Okay, interesting. I got a letter from the bankruptcy court. Can it be useful for you guys to send to the credit bureau to help with my case? Yes, Teddy. Um, I'm thinking what you're talking about with the letter from the bankruptcy court. I want to get back to... Uh, I want to get back to talking about the inquiries because there was a good question about about uh, inquiries. Um, Judy, send me a private message in to the credit movement, and I'll I'll call you and we'll we'll talk. I got a few other folks that were requesting calls. I hope I answered your question, Lando Morales. Um, so we can chat about that a little bit more. I'm trying to find the okay inquiries. We talked about this, you guys. So there's this there's this myth that you have this 30 day shopping window. You can pull credit as many times as you want. If you look at this here, you can see these are all coded differently. You can see auto financing, auto finance, miscellaneous finance, automotive finance, personal bank, and these are all they're all the uh, right here. They're all the car finance places. But you can see that auto dealers new down here. Automotive, auto financing, finance, personal, auto financing, miscellaneous. So that on, that 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 information that they only count as one if they're pulled in the same 30-day shopping window is only true if they're coded the same way, right? Otherwise, the algorithm doesn't know. So unfortunately, you end up with all these inquiries from car shopping, and your score goes down by 50 points. So yes, and you've only authorized one inquiry. So, and thank you guys for sharing this. I encourage you share this post. Let's get as many people on this live here as, as possible. So, let's see. 
if you have a foreclosure and after foreclosure they sell the account, let's see, Wes Bryan saying, I have the same foreclosure twice. Can they do that? No, absolutely not. Um, once the, the foreclosure is redeemed, right, um, they cannot sell that information. Now, um, there could be a deficiency balance, but that's usually on short sale, not foreclosure. So I'm not sure. Maybe it was a second mortgage, right, that wasn't secured by the property. I don't know. There's a, so many variables, you guys, and I don't want to answer that with incorrect information. And thank you, Celeste, for sharing this. this and, and I appreciate you guys tagging your friends that you think would, would benefit. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, and Adam, I, I think you saw that. Judy said his account got hacked, so there's some stuff on there. It's not, so no, it's not a, a second mortgage. It's the actual first. You defaulted, got foreclosed, foreclosure redeemed, it's done, it's gone, and then there's a third party trying to collect on it. Yeah, that's not right. Not right at all. Um, so inquiries, you guys, let's just talk about those for a second just to clear up any misconceptions. Um, thank you, Wes. I saw it. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's wrong. I would love to help you and take a look at it. I think there's going to be some things that can be done to, to correct that and, and, and get you out from under that, no doubt. Um, I don't know, Adam, just someone, someone was in your account and said they're in Uganda or something. And uh, Judy, apparently, I don't know if you guys see that Adam's in here asking what was being sent. So don't, don't worry about it for now. I, I know who you are, Adam. And uh, Judy was just a little bit concerned, so, um, but all good. Um, but yeah, Wes, send me a private message. I'd love to talk to you about it. So let's talk about inquiries. So third-party inquiries, you guys. So when you apply for something, if you want to buy a boat, um, if you want to buy a car, if you want to buy a house, if you want to get a credit card, those inquiries impact your score, okay? Three to five points for the first 90 days. On day 91, it might only hurt you two points, and then it has a diminishing impact over time. Those are third-party hard inquiries. Those are the inquiries that everyone talks about. Those are the ones that hurt your score. And why the car dealerships pull your credit, you guys, is if I took a poll of everyone on here, um, Rod, I love you, buddy. Thank you. Um, if I took a poll of everyone on here right now and said, why do you think car dealerships shop your credit around so much? I guarantee most of you guys would say to get me the lowest payment to give me the best interest rate. Well, that's BS, you've been brainwashed. The real answer is, is because they want to get, they get what's called a bank fee or a kickback or a yield, right? And it's not a car salesman's fault or anyone, it's the finance company, it's the dealer and they're a business, right? They get, say, you know, they shop it, they give it to the local credit union that says, we'll give you 200 bucks for this loan. And then the, you know, they take that $200 offer from the, local credit union, they go to Capital One Auto Finance, say, Capital One, can you beat this? And Capital One says, yeah, we'll give you a 350 for it. And then they take it from Capital One and they go to Ally Financial and say, Ally, can you beat 350, right? And they try and figure out who can give them the biggest kickback or yield or what's called a bank fee, okay? That's why they shop it around to 40 different places, okay? But there's hard inquiries. Soft inquiries are when you pull it yourself. If we pull it um, for from Identity IQ, it's just a consumer pull. You're not applying for something in exchange for that credit pull. Does that make sense? So it's not going to ding your score. Um, soft inquiries are also known as account or account review inquiries are also known as soft inquiries. Account review inquiries are if you have a credit card with Capital One, they reserve the right to increase your interest if you become a higher risk to the bank at any time, meaning your score goes down, right? So if your score goes down and they pull your credit on a routine basis every 30 days, and most of your creditors, creditors do, especially unsecured debt like credit cards, if your score goes down, they're going to jack your interest rate up. Now, if your score goes up, they'll never lower your interest rate, ironically, right? So just bear that in mind, you guys, that inquiries impact you if you have a, you know, if you're applying for something, okay? Now, there are account review inquiries. Um, those are soft inquiries. They don't hurt your score. Promotional inquiries are when you get the you've been pre-approved, you've been pre-qualified junk in the mail, right? Junk mail. Um, that's the credit bureaus. Again, a lot of people think they're government agencies or something. They're not. They're for-profit businesses. 
And one of the ways they make money is selling your information. So Capital One goes to Equifax and says, give us a, ch give us a list of names of 10 million people that have between a 580 and a 620. We're going to send them the Quicksilver card application in the mail if they have between 580 and 620. Now, why do they buy a list of people that have between a 580 and a 620? Because they're irresponsible, but they pay their bills on time if they're just profiling and they spend millions of dollars on profiling consumers. So 580 to 620 is someone who is likely to max out the card and make minimum payments for the rest of their life at 30% interest, right? It's just, it's just business, right? But that's a promotional inquiry that doesn't ding your score until you fill out the application and mail it in. Does that make sense you guys? I hope it does. Um, yep. Yep. Wait, Joanna Morrison, tell me, tell me more. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> she says, great improvement in this system. Credit movement has made. Also, I have learned so much on credit. Now I can teach my kids. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. It honestly brings a tear to my eye. That's why I started this, you guys. I want to create a movement. When we're, I'm building out a studio. We're moving to a new office. You guys will see it soon. Um, June 1st, we move in. I'll probably have the studio set up and built out by mid to late June, something like that. But I'm really excited. We're gonna we're gonna push this stuff on YouTube. We're gonna be on Instagram. You know, I encourage you guys follow the credit movement on Instagram as well because I'm gonna start putting a lot of different content up there. Um, so be sure if your Instagram users follow the credit movement at, at the credit movement. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you, Joanna. Tell me more. Tell me more. Um, and thank you guys for sharing this. We have several hundred views, almost a thousand views already. We have 45 live viewers. I'm very grateful. And thank you for sharing your stories and sharing your successes with us. Um, Again, it wouldn't be possible without you guys being here and sharing your stories, sharing your unique financial situations because again, without your participation, I'd have nothing to talk about. I'd just be rambling. So it's great to have you guys here. It's a round table discussion. This is a community. We're all here to help. We're here to help alleviate people's concerns. We're here to answer questions. We're here to help you understand the silly credit game better. So anyway. Judy, I will be in touch. I will be in touch. And thank you again for, for, for bringing that up. How does it affect my score if I can get pre if I get approved credit card offer? Um, probably three to five points, Jessica. Great question. And only it doesn't impact your score though until you fill out the application, take the offer they're giving you. Does that make sense? So you got to accept the offer. Um, otherwise it's just a, a promotional deal. Thank you, Judy. I'm sure Adam appreciates it. I'm sure he wants to figure out what's going on. First time on here. I'm definitely trying to build my credit. Great Juju. Everyone welcome Juju Bean. Um, Juju, thank you for joining. Um, there's a ton of information on here. Obviously, we're talking about different topics every night. We're taking questions, and then I just go on weird rants about, um, you know, I, I take a question and I turn it into a long-winded answer, and the reason I do that is to educate around that particular subject matter, um, and that's why, again, I'm so grateful and thankful to everyone for participating and sharing their, their stories. Um, Let's see. Cody says, yeah, I watched a previous video where you did the pie chart. I learned more in that video than I have in 10 years. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, you guys, they don't teach this stuff in school. You get a doctorate in finance and they probably won't teach it because the professor doesn't understand it. You know, this is just a specialty kind of lane that I found myself in and an obsession. Um, you know, I could go on about Metro 2 compliance, Google that. It's all the coding and eOSCAR and the systems that communicate between creditor and credit bureau when they fish data, batch data into the credit bureaus. It's, it's crazy, the coding and all the different stuff, but it's a weird obsession for me. 
Nita says, I have been with a few credit repair companies and no one lives up to the stand. Thank you so much, Nita. I really appreciate your kind words and um, I'm here to, I'm here to help. So thank you. Thank you. Puh. Wes is a great question. You know, it really just depends. I mean, well, here's the difference between us and most people, you guys. A lot of people say, Ryan, $119.99, there's a guy down the street. He's saying he can fix my credit for 49 bucks a month. Well, great. Go to him then. I don't care. But listen, he's not gonna he's not gonna be here face to face with you a couple days a week. He's probably only going after two accounts at a time with each credit bureau. Otherwise, there's no way you can make money $49 a month, right? I don't make any money. I'm paying more in postage, right? Um, you know, it's uh it's it's difficult to to do right um so at 49 bucks i mean i don't know how we would be making any money but to answer your question the difference between us and them is most people go after two accounts at a time with each credit bureau and they drag it out so they can bill you that 49 and 49 is kind of a a good pricing model for somebody who just wants to have their clients forget about it and just you know because 49 bucks may not for a good portion of their clientele, they may just kind of not notice it's happening and then they just can bill them for the rest of their life 49 bucks, even though they're not really doing anything. Or if they are, they're going after one account at a time. Well, here's an example. These are Experian results. And you can see here, look at all these things listed. These were a lot of duplicate medicals. See all those deleted? And then it continued on to a second page down here. And you can see where it's just like deleted, 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 deleted. So I don't know. I mean, I've had rounds where I've gotten 50 some items removed. Um, it just really depends on the uniqueness of the credit profile. Everyone's credit's unique, but most importantly, the goal is unique, right? But in that particular case, it was 45 or something items removed. And um, I think the score went up 120 some points or something. I don't remember, but something, something great. Um, Keisha Barnes, welcome. Um, I need to definitely need to improve my credit score. Where do I start? You're in the right place first off. Um, you know, we, we talk about all the different options. I, I wrote a book on the topic. I give it away for free. It's in the comments. If you look at one of the first comments on this video, um, you can get the ebook version for free of this book. Um, we talked about kind of what's in the book, cleaning up the foundation of your credit. Um, this is what... Um, I think it was Cody Holyfield that was mentioning the pie chart. I just saw it when I was scanning through here. Um, I did a little, and I, I'm gonna do a little more seminar style lives for you guys eventually. Like I said, we're moving to a new office and um, that's the pie chart. But anyway, the book has all the letters that you would need to, to challenge stuff um, and be successful, to be honest. It's just, it, it is a full-time job, you know? But you, you can see all the all the different letters, and there will be a new version of the book coming out before the end of the year. There's some things that have changed that I want to update, yada yada. But the book is is a great tool. Um, a lot of people say, you know, like I, the analogy I gave earlier of cleaning my gutters. You know, we had a ton of leaves in the gutters, and then it rained like crazy on Friday, and my gutters were weighed down. And I thought about getting up there, and then I thought, no, you know what, I'm going to go you know, throw the ball with my kids or get on the trampoline in the backyard with my kids instead of spend my weekend doing that or changing your oil. I don't want to get dirty. So you can do all this stuff on your own, you know, and a lot of people come on my videos and say, why would you pay anyone to do this when you can do it on your own? Of course you can. You can do a million things on your own, but some people like to have a service do it because this is brain damage, you know, um, and it's a lot of work. And if you don't have a system in place, or you don't know exactly what you're doing, as many of the people on here will tell you, you can cause more harm than good by by doing this if you're not doing it the right way you know um a lot of people that are using the book have come onto the community and said ryan you know i i got these things deleted and my score went down well your score went down because you're not you didn't follow all the instructions to a t or you challenged something to remove the entire account versus just remove the late payments or something like that right so there's so many catch 22s there's so many things that that could go wrong so keisha welcome you're in the right place we go live on here a couple days a week so be sure you set alerts um, for the lives or check the page um if you you know are serious about improving your credit and you want it done as quickly as possible you know, we have a program where we do it. We're very aggressive. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going after eight to 12 accounts per client per credit bureau per month versus a lot of the other guys who charge more. 
<laughs> and only go after two at a time. Excuse me. Um, so, Juju Bean says, I've been disputing one account. I was under domestic violence in Indiana law. And Time says, you can't charge if I have, I have to move. I provided the apartment, the paperwork. Yeah, and that's just a, you know, that's a one-off scenario case where, you know, I'm sure you're not alone in that instance, but, um, you know, God bless you. I'm glad you got the hell out of there and you're safe first and foremost, right? Life is more important than credit. But um, I'd be happy to, to look at it for you, Juju, and see if there's something that we can do to kind of step in and, and help. Feel free to send a private message anytime. Just go on the credit movement page, click on send a message, um, and send a private message. Just put live chat in your phone number. I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, typically, it's a permanent deletion at a credit bureau level. Now, that's not to say, Wes, that they're not going to break the law and resell it to some other third party, but then we just go back after them. Okay. So great question. And that goes true for, for everyone, you know, um, it holds true for everyone. So, um, yeah, that's not, that's for every item, not just the foreclosure that Wes was referencing earlier. Things could come back, but not with that particular creditor. Does that make sense? We're permanently deleting it. It's illegal for them to put it back on. If they do, it's called the reinsertion where, let me see, right here, five day reinsertion letter. They have to send you a notification telling you they're putting it back on and why and all the legal language is there. So anyway, there's a method for that. Uh, Need a new office is here in Charlotte. We're just moving, we're in Valentine now, which is kind of swanky and expensive and we're in a small, small ass room. I'll show you guys if you want to see it. Um, and so we have literally like, uh, you know, those, um, <laughs> this is funny. Um, you know, they, those, uh, uh, wardrobes, I think they're called, right? Where you hang your clothes. We have those and we have moving blankets draped over them to kill the sound between our little spaces <laughs> for me, Anthony and Juan here. So we're going to get in a little bigger space, um, where we're going to have some private offices, a conference room and a big, you know, floor for customer service. So I'm going to bring all of that in house Anne's in Anne's moving here to Charlotte to, to help me run the office. A lot of you guys know, Anne. she's a sweetheart. She's great. We love her. She's been with us a long time. And so Anne is going to come in house and kind of help me manage the office. And we're going to get more customer service agents so we can better service all of you guys that have put your trust in us um, and, and train people. I'm going to have more of a studio to do these lives and bring you more educational material. It's going to be awesome. I'm super excited about it, but it's just here in Charlotte, just a little closer to the airport, um, kind of on the West side, um, kind of Northwest side it happens to be right across the street from top golf, right across the freeway. And I love golf and top golf is great. So anyway, that's where we're going to be at over there. It's called Whitehall. If you have a charged off, removed how many points does your score go up it depends i mean carla that's a great question but i'm going to always answer you guys with the specifics like this it depends i mean what other positive open active credit do you have on your credit report do you have 30 positive accounts that have been on there for 40 years or do you have one other positive account um, what other negative accounts do you have do you have 64 other negative accounts um, that are all recently reporting with recent dates of last activity that are coded as 09s. Well, it's probably not going to help you that much. Is that your only negative account and the date of last activity was this month? Well, that coming off could have a huge positive impact, right? If that charge off had a date of last activity of 2011 coming off might not help your score at all. May even hurt it. Who knows, right? So that's a loaded question, Carla. Um, it just really, it depends. Are my scores on identity queued? No, they're not, Rod. Great question. They are consumer scores. The only place you can get true FICO scores, you know, like if you're trying to compare for mortgage purposes, is from a mortgage broker, right? Um, I'll show you in the book again, you guys. It's a great question. I always tell people if you go to 100 different places, you're going to get 100 different scores. So lay your eyes on this, you guys. Get close to the computer. Can you guys see this? You see where it says um, TransUnion? 
and then it says FICO Classic 04. And then you see where it says Experian, and it says Fair Isaac version 2. And you see where it says Equifax, and it says FICO Classic version 5 or FACTA. Those are FICO, those FICO algorithms are specific to the mortgage industry. They're the only ones approved by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for mortgage underwriting purposes, okay? So even if you go to my FICO or you have a Discover card that says we give FICO scores, which is what mortgage companies use, they're not accurate, right? Because there's a ton of different versions of FICO. A lot of people say FICO score. Well, FICO score is doesn't mean anything. What version of FICO? Is it an industry option FICO that was used for a car purpose? Well, that FICO is different than the mortgage FICO. Is it FICO 9, which is used by Discover Card, and they say it's a FICO score? Um, and they were just sued for that, by the way, for deceptive practices because they're telling people they use the scores that mortgage companies use, and turns out they don't, right? It's just the same brand, but not the same exact algorithm. Does that make sense? FICO being the brand, right? It's like saying, you know, we um, uh, we sell, you know, uh, soup. It's a soup. It's same soup that you know that pro athletes eat. Well, their soup is like condensed Campbell soup versus the other soup being Progresso, all natural, whatever soup. Right? They're two different. They're soup, but they're different versions of soup. Right? So anyway. I don't know. That's a silly example. It's just what came to me. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Um, my federal student loans defaulted and I placed them in rehab, which they are coming out of soon. I don't know where to go from here. I want them to positively, positively report on my credit. Can you give tips? Yes. Yeah, so Jere Smith, a lot of times with student loans. Now it depends what type of program you entered with the fed. Um, if they're fed loans, but a lot of times if you make nine months of on-time payments, maybe that's the rehab you went through. At that nine months uh, of nine months of consecutive payments, they'll remove all the negative history that was attached to them. Is that what you entered? And if so, great news. But you have to make sure you poke at the credit bureaus. And you know, I would send a letter notifying them that you completed the rehab and you're requesting the removal of all the negative history that's attached to those. Does that make sense? So. Aretha, I'll send you a link to her schedule so you can um, get get set up with her, um, and I'll make sure I, I follow up with her as well. Um, Lucretia Carrillo, yeah, just be patient. If it was last week, you know, it's going to be I, – I always tell people allow about 45 days. Now, the credit bureaus have 30 days by law. You know, I know it's easy to get impatient, you guys, when it comes to wanting to see results and 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 get fired up, and you want to you see change right away, and I get it. I can assure you we're going as fast as anyone can go. We're going to get the letters out for you right away. The credit bureaus have, you know, by law, they have 30 days to respond from the time they enter. So if I overnight letters tomorrow to the credit bureaus, let's say, for you, they'll get there on Wednesday. Wednesday, they the credit, the credit bureaus receive them, but they don't actually intake them into their dispute verification process for like a week or something, let's say. So now we're, you know, nine days from today and now the 30 day clock starts ticking and then they can complete it. Now they don't always take 30 days, but they could. And then they mail stuff back to you. So I always say allow 45 days, but great question. Um, Lucretia, and thank you so much for putting your trust in us. So yeah, the results should be coming within the next 30 days or so. Yeah. I hope you do get to meet Ann Nita. She's great. She is great. Um, you guys will have to come by the office sometime. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's it's half the rent cost is Valentine here. So I want to be able to keep my cost down. Otherwise, I'm going to have to charge you guys like $500 a month just to pay my rent in this damn building. Cost money to run a business. <laughs> You're welcome, Carla. Thank you. Um, let's see. Becky says collection shield 360. I received a verification of debt credit one from LVNV funding resurgent capital services. Um, not necessarily. I don't know what the hell they're doing for you. I, I can't speak to what they're doing, what services they're offering. Cause I'm not familiar with them. 
Um, I'd be happy to look at it, Becky, for you, review it, see what's going on, see what I can do to uh, to get things uh, get things moving in the in the right direction. You're welcome, Rod Ward. Got it. Jure is saying about the student loans. Yep, perfect. I'd be happy to help you with that. All right, let's talk about business credit. It's not part of our program per se, but I can talk about it because I've started multiple businesses. So, um, you guys, when it comes to um, business credit, if you're starting a business or you want to build business credit, I'm going to keep this brief because this is about personal credit. And I don't want a bunch of people to just drop off, but I think it's important here for everyone. Um, business credit, your social is your EIN. It's a tax ID number. So obviously you set up your business properly. You get a tax ID number. You can just go to irs.gov. You get your tax ID number. Then you go to Dun and Bradstreet. Okay. And you set up what's called a Dun's number. If you haven't done that, get a Dun's number. It's, it's a way to monitor your corporate credit, right? Then you have to go to American Express and get a, get a corporate credit card, but only give them your EIN number. You don't want it to be personally guaranteed. You want it to be a business credit card solely being reported on your business, right? Once you do that, if you need to get lines of credit to establish your, your, your business credit, send me a message. I'd love to talk to you about it. So um, I'd, love to, I'd love to talk more about it, but those are kind of the key steps, right? You obviously have to set up your business properly through the state, Secretary of State, business entity data. Then you get your tax ID number from irs.gov. Once you have your tax ID number, you get your bank accounts, your business you know, checking savings, um, and then get an American Express card. That's a corporate card only. That's only on your EIN. So I hope that helps. And we can get more into that at a later date. So I hope that helps you, Latrice. But Anyway, you guys, anything else? Any other questions? Did I miss anything? I know I, you know, I we went through a lot here. Um, let's see. Let me see. I think I got everything. I think I got everything. I'll put the link in here for the book where you can get my ebook for free. Adam did that earlier, but I'm gonna I'm gonna repost it here. Perfect, Latrice. You're welcome. I hope that helped. And there's the link for the book that'll take you to the the free ebook. Um, uh, let me see here. Let me see if I'm missing any. I don't know if you guys saw this earlier, but this is Nita who's on here. She's awesome. She had medical bills, outstanding ones. They're all deleted from her report, like $800 worth because they couldn't validate or verify them. Okay? That's how we do it. Thank you, Adam. You have your LLC. Good, Latrice. Now you just got to get your... Yep, get your Dunn's number from Dunn and Bradstreet, but first go to irs.gov and apply for your EIN number. You can get it right online. Then get your Dunn's number, then get your Amex, then use it in your styling. Let's see, Shakia Carter says, if I have collections that are still being reported, should I pay them? Careful, careful. You don't want to reset the date of last activity and have them hurt your score more than help you. You always have to get a letter of deletion. <laughs> Rod, uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Um, you always have to get a letter of deletion if you're going to pay them. So, um, and again, a letter of deletion looks like this. Ellery just got one and sent it to us. I don't have it available to show you guys yet, but he put it in the messenger. Um, let me just show you. Here's one from like Comcast. If you've ever seen Stellar Stellar Recovery here, you can see it says original creditor Comcast. Here's the full letter. You can see this letter confirms that the trade line, blah, 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 Stellar Recovery has been submitted to be deleted, right? So if you're going to pay any of them, you always want to get a letter like this that says they're willing to delete it. You're going to see that. So... Got to get the letter of deletion. Otherwise, you know, don't pay it. If it's like medical, NCC looks like this. Um, list the accounts. Credit bureau deletion. See that? 
Um, so no, I wouldn't. I would have us or dispute them on your own the right way. The right way, put the right pressure on them. Sorry. Right down here, you see this, guys? Right here. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you always want to wait. Let's see what happens. Make them validate and verify. How many credit cards do you suggest when starting out? Just get at least two, you guys. I always say three is, is kind of ideal, but two is fine. Just more than one and less than eight, please. Um, but, yeah, that, I hope that helps you. Cody, great question. A lot of people say, well, I don't want to get one of these secure cards because the interest rate's too damn high. Don't pay interest. Just put a tank of gas in your car and pay the full damn thing off in full and never pay interest on it. Right, guys? We don't care about that. Johanna, she's back. The credit score went from low 400s to 561 in two months. Congrats, Joanna, and thank you for sharing that with us. God bless you. Congratulations. You should be proud of yourself for taking action, right, you guys? Everyone should be proud of Joanna for taking action. So many people just, you know, they 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 bitch about their credit to their friends and they come on here and they talk about the problems they have and then they don't do anything about it, right? You know, they don't do anything. They don't hire a professional. They don't get the book or they get it and then they just kind of stare at it and say, tomorrow I'll start that. And then they never do. That's what we don't want, you guys. Don't bury your head in the sand. So, Joanna, you should be proud of yourself. Well done. Well done. Um, what else, guys? So many people coming on here saying good things. I love it. So proud of you guys. Proud of you, proud of you. Thank you for sharing, Renee. I really appreciate it. Wow. Yeah, this is one of our most viewers. i got to start doing these later in the in the evenings, I guess. So I think we're catching some people on the West Coast when they're off work when we do them a little later like this. So I love it. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Um, yep, that helps. That certainly helps. There's all sorts of tricks, right? If you have medical bills too, you guys, that's one thing Joanna just reminded me when she said that. Um, one thing with medical bills is if, if they're derogatory – uh, I mean, if you have medical bills, like things that come in the mail and, you know, insurance didn't cover it or it was a copay or whatever, and you can't afford to pay it, the best thing you can do is contact them directly and just set up a 5 or $10 a month payment because that'll stop it from going to collections. If you just ignore it, you're going to get slaughtered. So. Rod. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Brenda, we're here. We're here. All you got to do is send a message. Go to uh, go to the Credit Movements page, click on Send a Message, and just put live chat with your phone number, and I or one of the teammates will call you right away. Becky, it's right here. It's $119.99 each month. Um, you can do it for free with the book, but again, remember, it's not free. Because again, you got to send a lot of things certified. All of them you should send certified with return receipt to make sure that we're creating a paper trail and we can hold them accountable under the Fair Credit Reporting Act Section 611 Part B, which says they have that 30-day investigation process. So, you know, if you've got 20 negative items on your credit that are on all three bureaus, that's 60 letters plus. You got to go to the creditors directly to be successful. That's 80 at four dollars per letter certified. You know, 360 bucks or whatever. 300. $20, I should say. Some things need to be notarized as well. So it's, you know, $119.99 is, you'll never pay more than that. And the difference between us and the other companies, most people that came to us have been with another company. Most of them were paying that other company $140 or $150 each month, but that company was only going after two accounts with each credit bureau each month, which means let's say you're paying them $140, $139 or whatever, and we're charging $120, let's say. Um, and that's for online tracking, portal access, you know, 
you know, you can log in anytime, you can see what's going on. And we're going after up to 12 accounts each month. So let's say you're with one of those companies that's going after two and they're charging 140. It's gonna take them six months. And six months times $140 is like $840, $840 I believe. You're gonna pay them $840 and wait six months of your time to do what we do in the first round. Does that make sense? So that's, if you're wondering what the price is, that's what it is. Lily, we're here for you. We're here for you. Whenever you're ready, we're here for you. You can get my book for free. If you look in the comments, there's a link. I encourage you to get it even if you elect to hire us, even if you say, Ryan, hey, thanks for the book, but I don't want to do this stuff on my own. I got kids. I'm working. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm exhausted when I get home. The last thing I'm going to do is is deal with all this stuff. You know, it's, it, it honestly is like another full-time job if you do it right. So just be aware of what it takes. Um, and thank you for everyone for joining. Thank you for sharing these videos because we've got hundreds, we almost got over a thousand views already. So thank you guys for being a part of the credit movement and making it, making it possible. Um, that really depends, Lily. I mean, there's people on here that are in their second month, I mean, and their score is going up 200 points, right? There's others on here that, you know, they're, it's slower progress. It depends on the stuff that you have on your credit. Um, you know, Nita's on here. Nita just had, Nita had this, this was her, you know, she had four medical bills with outstanding balances, you know, deleted. Again, it's a process and it's different for everyone. It really depends on what your goal is. Um, everyone's goal is unique, you guys. I could have a 540 credit score and Lily, you could have a 540 credit score, but you're smart and I'm dumb and you understand the value in having a 700, right? Um, so you're willing to stay in the program a little bit longer than me. I just want to get to 620 because that's what the guy at the Ford dealership told me I needed to get my Mustang, right? And I want that damn Mustang. So I just want to get to 620. I need 80 points. And, you know, I may be able to do that in 60 days or 90 days or something. And, and I cancel, right? But you're smart and you say, I want to buy a house. And I understand that 700 versus 620 I'm going to save $600 a month on my mortgage. I'm not going to have to pay that crazy pre PMI or mortgage insurance premium. 600 bucks a month, that's 7,200 a year. You got to make 10,000 to pay that 7,200. That's 300 grand over the course of a 30 year loan, right? 10,000 a year, 30 years. You're smart. You understand 120 isn't a big deal. It's an investment, right? In the future, in your financial future. So, but it's up to you. And that's why we do it on a month to month basis. Some people have two things to work on. Some people are coming out of bankruptcy and have 700 items to work on or whatever, right? So it just really depends on the individual, but we will take an aggressive approach, the same aggressive approach we take for everyone, regardless of the issues. It just depends what your goal is and how high you want to see your score. So After you dispute a collection three times by phone, I wouldn't. I would never dispute by phone. First off, Eric, don't dispute by phone. Um, oh, don't dispute online either. Don't ever dispute online. You waive certain rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. You can't threaten them. Suit of small claims, different methods and tactics. Um, yes, there is a couple's discount, Renee. Great question. Um, so instead of one nineteen ninety nine. For the second person, it's seventy nine ninety nine. Okay, so it's less than two hundred bucks for a couple. So seventy nine ninety nine for the second person each month. That includes the credit monitoring, all three bureaus, all three scores. It includes up to twelve, even more, twelve or more disputes with each credit bureau each month. Um, and you have online tracking portals, so you can see exactly what's going on. Nita Robinson says, "Put your trust in the credit movement. I've been with them since January. I started in the four hundred. Beautiful, and it's just gonna keep going up. It's a process, you guys. I'm not the guy promising the magic wand and there's no six minute abs, right? There's no magic diet pill you can take and all the fat falls off you. It's not It's not easy, it's hard work, but we're always gonna shoot you straight. Um, we're not gonna hide, I'm gonna be on here doing these lives no matter what, um, several days a week, facing you guys, talking to you, sharing in your success. I'm so proud of all of you guys, it's a good job. And thank you for sharing this video, you guys, because we're covering some good stuff that I think is going to help a lot of people. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate you. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a husband and wife. It can be a husband and husband, wife and wife. It can be a father-daughter. It can be a whatever, right? Two people, yeah, we'll give a discount. doesn't matter. So, 
Let's see, what else, guys? What other credit questions? I know we're talking a lot about the product, about what I sell, and I don't like this being about that. I like this being about education. Um, so you're very welcome. Beautiful, Rod. You're the man. Yeah, don't dispute by phone. Um, thank you, Joanna. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Let's see. But yeah, anytime, you know, I know the, the, the collection question came up, you guys. You always want to challenge them first because you never know when something like this is going to happen and $800 worth of collections are going to be deleted, right? You never know when we're going to go after all of them and all of them are going to be deleted, like 45 of them, right? You never know. Um, so you always, want to, you always want to send debt verification or validation stuff first. And then if that doesn't work, then, you know, even a bankruptcy here, you guys. Bankruptcy right here. Deleted. Bankruptcy Court of Eastern California. Deleted. Um, then you want to just... You know, if you dispute it and it comes off like this, receivable solutions, you can see here, deleted, deleted. Um, that's when you want to get the, uh, you know, you want to start doing the, you know, if it's a collection outstanding, you want to do the pay for deletion like this. In this one, we were able to settle and get them deleted because they didn't send what's called a dunning letter. The Fair, the Fair Credit Reporting Act is what governs the you know how things report are being reported by the credit bureaus but the fair debt collection practices act is what governs the collection agencies and how they collect on debt and they have to send what's called a dunning letter within five days first contacting you on a debt and a lot of times they don't do that or they don't send it to an accurate address and if that's the case and you can prove that then there's a case to be made for removing certain things so um what part of the pie chart is best to focus on? I know there are all important, but which ones are going to be most impactful? Um, Cody, you love that pie chart, don't you? You love that pie. Um, there you go. So obviously the two biggest sections are purple there, 35% of payment history and 30% amounts owed. But one that's really overlooked is the 15% length of credit history, which is an average of how long you've been in the game, right? I mean, obviously, most people are focused on the 35%, which is the bad stuff, right? Um, the bad stuff is, you know, late payments, charge-offs, collections, you know, all the garbage, right, that most people are thinking about when they think about their credit. It's the stuff they owe on or whatever. So most people are going to naturally focus there, but you can't neglect your balance to limit ratios on credit cards. Oh, hi, wifey. My wife's on here. It's the first time she's joined us. My wife. Um, so the 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 orange section there is important, right? It's revolving debt ratios. Um, so if you've got if you've got credit cards, you know there's a lot of tricks to get your balance limit ratios below thirty percent. Um, number one is pay it down, right? But a lot of people say, Ryan, I don't have the funds, I don't have the availability. I get it. Raise the limit if you've got good payment history with them. Bring the limit from, you know. $300 and you got a $290 balance, raise the limit to a thousand bucks and now you just went from being over 90% utilized to under 30%. Does that make sense? So anyway, um, but one section that's overlooked, Cody, uh, very often is the 15% length of credit history, the section in green there, which is how long have you been in the credit game, right? And this is why I always tell people, be careful not to close an account that you've had open for 30 years or something, right? I sounded like a total creep the other day talking to a woman on the phone when I told her to go buy herself something at Victoria's Secret. And she, through the phone, I could tell was ready to slap me. And it was awkward. It was awkward, admittedly, for a little while until I caught what I was doing. I wasn't thinking about Victoria's Secret. I was thinking about the fact that it said Synchrony Bank forward slash VSE or something, right? It was like, I was like, buy yourself something on this what is this, Victoria's Secret? And then I caught myself and we had our awkward moment. And then I said, you know, they sell chapstick, right? Buy some chapstick. Do whatever you need to do, but get activity on the card because a lot of times you guys forget about Victoria's Secret for a second. It was creepy. Um, but we got over it. 
And I explained to her that I'm not a creep. I'm telling you, I'm trying to protect your credit because you want to buy a house. And Victoria's Secret is your longest standing account. You've had this credit card open since 1998. And if they close it, you're going to lose 21 years of positive payment history on your length of credit history because everything else you have is brand new and you're going to lose this old account. So make sure that you keep activity on your credit cards at least every 18 months. If it goes 18 months with zero activity, they may, you may show up as closed due to inactivity, closed by credit grant or something like that, right? So just keep that in mind. I think that's a section that's, that's very highly overlooked, Cody. Um, anyway, and we'll get into more of the, uh, uh, in, into more of uh, the pie chart at another time. Ellery likes the pie chart too, except he likes it with ice cream. I love it. Wife's always putting. She is. She's the CEO of the. She's the boss of the house. Good job, wifey. Love you. I'll be home late. Sorry. Sorry. Forgive me. Um. Thank you, Ellery. God bless you, buddy. Paid a vehicle off early and got penalized. My score dropped. It did go back up in a couple months, but had no idea. Yeah. That's one of the that's one of the things that hurts your length of credit history. It hurts that positive the payment history section, the big part of the pie, you guys, the 35% is not just, you know, the bad stuff impacting your payment history, but it's also the good stuff, right? So you always want to people always say, should I pay off my car before I buy a house? Well, no, not unless the loan officer says you're close on your debt to income ratio, which is totally different than balance to limit ratio on credit cards. Don't get them twisted. Debt to income ratio is all of your monthly minimum payments on all your cards or, or liabilities, let's say, versus your income, right? If you're above 40% on that, you're in trouble when it comes to a home loan. So anyway. Um, you know, not really penalized, Lily. Um, what she's saying is, she got hit because she no longer had that monthly positive payment each month and she lost that length of credit history. If it was a 60 month, you know, five year car note and all of a sudden it was closed, it hurt her is what she's saying, I think. So anyway, you guys, any other questions? We're right around, we're over an hour now. I always like to keep these around an hour. I lose my voice and so many people need me uh, after the lives, especially. We got Deborah Deegan, uh, a few other folks need a call. I got I to gotta talk to Judy, sort her out. Um, I appreciate you guys sharing all your positive feedback and negative. You know, some people have questions or concerns about results and, and those types of things. And I'm never going to hide. Be, I'm, I'm never going to hide. I'm always going to be here talking to you guys. But so many newbies on here. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all you guys. And thank you for sharing these posts. Thank you for inviting your friends, telling coworkers, friends, and family. And Lily, thank you for for clarifying there. I'm doing monthly payments on my card and my score dropped. Yeah, if it's a negative, it's if it's a derogatory status and you're making any sort of monthly payments, you're resetting the date of last activity each month and that'll lower your score, unfortunately. So anyway, you guys, I think that's enough for this evening. I will be live on Wednesday night um, around six o'clock Eastern, I believe is what it's scheduled for. So please join us. Please share this again. Thank you guys for being a part of this. Thank you for sharing. I know talking about your personal finance, your credit, it's not easy. Um, but the best thing you can do is not bury your head in the sand, face your issues, get educated, take massive action. That's how you're going to see change. And by taking action, though, that action is going to change your circumstances, which is going to make you happy, which is going to make you live a better life. God bless you all. I love you. Thank you for being a part of the credit movement. And I will see you 